Hey, this is Amy. In this video, we're going to talk about APA citation, basically the foundational principles of citation and citing in APA formatting. Um, the seventh edition is the most up-to-date edition that was released in October of 2019, so um, be sure that you are expected to use APA 7th edition. Um, and then this bit.ly link down here, if you're already familiar with APA 6th edition and you just want to know, like, what do I need to change to um, get into APA 7th edition, that link will break it down for you. The document format itself does change a little bit. Um, so you would want to be aware of that. And when it comes to citations, multiple authors are handled differently. And then when you're citing books, you don't have to put the city of publication anymore. Those are the main changes that I noticed, but um, definitely check out that link if you're curious. Um, moving forward, the first thing to talk about is just using other people's work. Every researcher draws on the research that came before them. Um, no one knows everything about a topic, so you do need to have information. So that goes for, you know, academics whose job is to be a professional researcher. Um, they're publishing academic, scholarly, peer-reviewed articles. Um, and then also that applies to students as well, right? So um, you go out there and you find information. When you use the information that you get from other people, you are going to be citing it. We cite to support our claims. Um, we cite to give credit to the source. And then that also means that the quality of the information is attributed to its source. So if you cite a study that's later retracted, um, that doesn't necessarily reflect poorly on you. It's the study that was wrong. So um, you do want to point that out. And then um, another thing is sometimes your reader might be interested in a claim that you make or maybe you are the researcher who's interested in a claim you see in a paper. Um, if that happens, you are you or the researcher or whoever is providing enough information so that their audience could go find it on their own if they needed to or wanted to. Um, and then you're also putting yourself in the scholarly conversation. So you may be explaining why two different studies uh, relate to each other or Maybe you're agreeing with a uh, particular interpretation. Uh, you might be disagreeing. You might be doing something like, um, this study found this, and I want to add this. So there's lots of different ways for you to engage in scholarly conversation, and that's basically what you're doing um, when you cite and use others' work. So there's lots of different citation styles. There's hundreds. Um, the three main ones that are seen, though, are MLA, APA, and Chicago slash Turabian. Um, we're obviously talking about APA. An APA style is laid out in the publication manual of the American Psychological Association, 7th edition. Um, this cover image is shown on your screen. Um, you don't really have to buy a copy. You can buy a copy, um, but you could also borrow it from your library. But really, you may not even need this book at all because there are a lot of other resources available to you to help with citation. Um, if you're going to be a grad student in one of the fields that does use APA, you might want to buy yourself a copy, but um, it's not necessary. So the fields that use APA would be sciences, including social sciences, business, education, health sciences. Um, I think that's I probably missed one, but um, Jen, I'm just saying there's like there's a lot <laughs> of fields that use APA in their citation. Um, but really, you don't need the book. You can use the Roberts Library APA guide that I made. Um, you can look at the Purdue OWL APA page. I really like that one. It has extensive up-to-date resources showing you formatting and examples, not only of in-text citation and references entries, but also um, they have a, a sample paper that shows you how the paper should be formatted. So I really like that resource and I highly recommend it. Um, down at the bottom, we have a little emoji lady. I picked her because she looks like me, but basically, um, it's a stand in to tell you, like, ask a librarian um, whether you email me or you have a librarian that you already know um, or a library maybe that's closer to you and you just want to go in and ask them for help. Um, just speaking personally, um, from my professional experience, I get so many questions about citations. So um, I feel definitely a librarian can help you with that. So don't be afraid to ask for sure. Um, but basically, any time that you're using information that you got from someone else, uh, whether that's results from a study they conducted, um, their original ideas, which could be like a theory, um, 
the words that they put down, images, um, whether that's art or photographs or something, tables, anything considered intellectual property, you would want to cite that. Um, you don't have to cite facts, which are commonly known by your audience in easily verified and reference sources, but um, if you're not really sure, if you don't feel comfortable, you're like, well, I did find that, so I didn't already know it before, uh, maybe I should cite it. It's never wrong to cite, I mean, go ahead and cite it. Um, when you aren't citing, basically, the lack of a citation implies that it's either common knowledge or it's an original claim that you are making. And you're absolutely entitled to make your own original claims. Um, so just be aware of that, I guess. But these are the times that you cite. Um, and then with APA, basically, there's going to be your in-text citation. That's often called the parenthetical citation because it's enclosed in parentheses. But that's just going to have the author's last names and the year. Um, this is going to lead your reader or your audience or whatever to your references list where you have the example of the full citation in APA style with all of the publication information. So that is what it would look like in the text of your paper and then on the references page. So the first thing we're going to talk about is in-text citation. There's two ways to do in-text citation in APA. The first way is quotation. Just take the direct words, exactly what the other person said, put them between quotation marks, and then list the author, year, and page number. Um, I feel like that's completely acceptable um, if you like the way the original author said whatever they're saying. Um, sometimes it can be really hard to figure out a way to paraphrase it better than the original, but do check to be sure that your teacher is okay with it because some teachers don't like um, quotation either at all or too much. Um, it can be a little distracting as a reader because it breaks up your text and it can seem choppy. Um, so double check on that. But if you are going to be paraphrasing, that's basically explaining the information um, and contextualizing it in relation to like what you're working on. Um, you would put the paraphrase and then have the author's last name and year. You also in APA can put the author's last name and year in the paraphrase. That's something that we see in APA because a lot of times um, currency is valued in fields that APA is used in. So you're allowing your reader to understand at the beginning of the sentence and have that sense of time when this finding um, was discovered or when this claim was made in relation to the, the currency of the other information that you're talking about. Um, so that can be really helpful to your reader, especially in fields where research develops quickly. So paraphrasing is something that a lot of people have um, trouble with because it can be a little challenging. A lot of times it feels like if you just maybe change a couple words around, it's not the original, it's fine, go to the thesaurus and like pick a couple synonyms. Um, <laughs> so like don't do that though, um, because like I said earlier, if you like the way they said it and you can't really figure out how to say it better, just quote, unless your teacher says not to. But um, basically when you're paraphrasing, you're introducing and restating another person's original ideas in your own words. So don't copy their sentence structure or sequence of ideas and do cite with parentheses. So this is a um, this is a screen that on the screen we have um, how to paraphrase and some steps to effective paraphrasing and basically the gist of this is read the original passage until you understand it set the original aside write your paraphrase down make sure you know that um, it accurately go back you know take the original once you set it aside and written your example or your um, version of it I guess. Um, you know, take that original back and make sure that you have all the essential elements and you're not like unintentionally um, retaining the original phrasing and everything. Um, so if you did retain like some terminology or specific wording, you can put that part in quotes. But um, of course, record the source, including the page. And I personally don't use note cards, so I would just Myself, I would disregard all the stuff about note cards here, but if you use them, you know, do that stuff. But really good, keep good track of your sources because that's um, so uh, heartbreaking, right? When you have like an amazing piece of information, you're like, where did I get this? I can't cite it because I don't know where I got it. So keep good track of your um, research. All right. Um, so on this screen, I basically have a 
practice for paraphrasing. If you want to pause it and give paraphrasing a shot, go right ahead. And then we have some examples. So my presentation is kind of meme themed, but um, the memes uh, age so fast. So they're all old. I'm so sorry, but we just have to go with it. Um, so I found an article that was talking about memes and I pulled out this sentence from it and I put quotes around it and I put the author's last name, the year and the page number. Um, the quotes, of course, show that it's original wording, and then the period does go outside of the parenthetical or in-text citation, all right? Then I paraphrase that same information. So this is my paraphrase, and then I have the author's last name and the year. Then in this example, I basically have the author's last name and the year. I still have the information. It's just in the sentence now. So you don't also need it at the end, all right? All right, so now we're gonna do a quiz. It's just a really short quiz um, to show like what you would wanna cite versus not cite. Um, and it is Grumpy Cat themed, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> so we'll just go for it. All right, um, out of these two sentences, which one would you need to cite? I'm gonna just go ahead and move forward, but if you wanna pause the video and give it a shot, go for that. Um, the answer is B would need to be cited. It is data that comes from another source. Your reader may want to find that um, source and read more about it. A wouldn't need to be cited because it's a fact about the meme that if they didn't already know, it could be easily found. And then this is how you would cite it in the text and then on the references page. Um, so some, some common citation questions that I get, what if I'm citing information that comes from more than one source? Um, of course, if it's common knowledge or factual, there's no need to cite it. But if it does need to be cited, um, you can list the multiple citations by using um, uh, semicolons between them, okay? And actually that makes you look like a good researcher because if you find something that a whole bunch of people have said and you're reciting bam, 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 um, it just looks really, gives you more credibility as a researcher. Okay, and then what if I'm using a lot of information but it's all from the same source? Do cite the source every time you use it. A lot of times people think that they can just do a whole paragraph and put a citation at the end and it's good. It is not good. You might get in trouble um, for inappropriate citation. So be sure to cite um, and you can mix up your wording, okay? Cite it in every sentence in which you use the information. All right, so we talked about in-text citation. Now we're gonna talk about references. This is um, a page of references where each reference has at least one error. I'm gonna go ahead and let you pause it if you want to try to find them. But just moving on to the next slide, um, this is the errors and see if now that you have them pointed out, you can figure out what I'm pointing at. Um, the screen recorder only has 15 minute limits, so I'm pushing up on that, so I need to go fast. Um, so uh, you're gonna have a page at the end of your paper called references, listing all of the um, sources you cited within the body of your paper. I already talked about how references have more information. The whole, the whole page is double spaced. Citations are listed alphabetically. Do not indent first line, but do indent following lines. That is called a hanging indent. I have a video on that. This is what an APA format sample, um, no, sorry, <laughs> I'm thinking too fast. You can slow the audio down if you need me to go slower. But um, this is what a references page in APA style, sample references page, would look like. For authors, you use the last names and initials for the first and middle. Um, if there's multiple authors, do list them in the order they list themselves. Do not list any credentials such as MD, PhD, etc. Only capitalize the first letter in the title of a work except for proper nouns. And if there is a subtitle, capitalize the first letter of that. All right, including DOI, DOI database information. So much information is electronic now. A lot of articles have DOI. You have to include the basic publication information and honestly include a DOI. Um, you know, if there's not a DOI, uh, APA says to include the page where the article is listed and you might have to search to find that. Um, but all of the stuff that I've said cannot go um, without my final slide, which basically says your teacher may have guidelines that supersede official APA practices. So be sure to read your syllabus and or assignment sheet to make sure don't, um, you know, turn it in if they ask you to do stuff differently, because I'm just talking about official APA. So if you guys have questions, if you need help or anything, please get in touch. Um, I'm running up on 15 minutes, so I'm going to end the video. But thank you so much for watching and um, good luck on your work.